All in favor? Perfect. Oh, we got a thumbs up. Thanks, guys. Cool. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Eric Bajaya. I'm the chairman of the board for Building Smart Australasia. Uh, this is the first of a live interactive update um, that we're going to provide. We're probably looking to provide three or maybe four during the year. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and I guess we're doing this based on some of the feedback that we've got from our members. So the idea here is to go beyond just the newsletters that we provide and give people not only updates in one direction, but also get some feedback back from our members as to what's going on with Building Smart, both at a local level and an international level. Um, and it's also an opportunity to ask questions of the board. So there'll be different people on the board that will be presenting. Um, as Audrey said earlier, if you're not speaking, just go on mute. Um, feel free to type questions in the chat at any time or just put your hand up at any time and we can we can field questions as we go along. Um, for those who aren't aware, this is our current board. So I think we had an election at the end of last year. Uh, a few changes in the board with some people leaving and some new ones coming in. Um, Nathan coming into the board and myself taking over as chair. David and Holger as the vice chair. Um, and then the rest are probably carried over. And Audrey, who sits off the side, that does a lot of our hard work. I thought we'd put her on the slide as well because she probably deserves some recognition for the work that she does within Building Smart. Uh, in terms of our corporate, just to give you an idea, I guess, of where we are with our corp, some of our membership, and we'll discuss some of this um, with some updates that we're doing as well. Uh, we still got Osroads as one of our partners, uh, gold member of Autodesk, silver with Simic and BIM Consulting and Door Office and Revistu, and then a whole bunch of other corporate members. Um, and there's a lot of our individual corporate members that a lot of you that are on the call at the moment. Uh, aside from that, and I guess that's one thing that's come back from some of our feedback is us being a bit of a catalyst with government. In terms of what we've been doing over the few last couple of years, the main bodies that we've been interacting with um, is ABAB. So David Mitchell was sitting on, on the board, executive board of ABAB, and now I've taken over and am sitting on that board. The ABAB board sort of links with some other industry groups. Aside from that, we've also been doing some work with Infra Infrastructure Australia, um, with Tim Mumford and the role that he's got there and close interactions with Transport for New South Wales um, with some of the work that we're doing there and some of the piloting work that we're undertaking there. One thing we decided to do this year, particularly after a la a quite a tough year last year, as everybody had, and a lot of, for a lot of the industry groups with a lot of events and things that we normally run that we couldn't run, um, we decided this year to go out to our membership group, particularly a lot of our corporate members, and just get some feedback um, from our members just to understand, okay, what are we doing well? What do our members want to see more of? What do, we, what do you want to see less of? Um, and just general feedback, we can feed back up to BSI as well. Some of the things that have come out of that, so this is probably just a sample, but some of the common themes that came through from our members as to what they wanted to see more of, a um, bit more focus on civil and linear infrastructure. Um, facilitating more open discussion and cohesion between industry and government. Um, a lot of our members saw that as one of our roles and to spend more time trying to do that, bring industry and government together. Uh, looking more in the construction and operations phase. Um, I think Building Smart historically has had a history and design, but starting to look more into how BIM and open BIM can be used and utilised better in, in the construction and operations. Um, still in connection with experts so that was one thing that came from a few members about um, connecting them up with IFC experts or open BIM experts that could assist them um, and prevent being that sort of catalyst to connect the two together uh, developing some more guidelines that can be used in Australia around open BIM and IFC um, spending a bit more time with industry particularly through TAFE, TAFE and uni groups to get more diversity into the industry or you know, building smart playing a part and getting in early with those institutions to bring more people into the industry and more diverse people into the industry. Uh, providing more access, this was something that came up, a bit more access to both domestic and international working groups and initiatives. And part of what we'll talk about today, um, Jim and John will start, will present on some of the work that's going on 
with Building Smart International around some of the future IFC development and discussing how our members can get more involved with that if they want to um, and get, making them aware that those initiatives are happening and if you do want to get involved, you can get involved. Uh, and the final one there is providing leadership in training, certification and testing. And Holger will talk about that when we talk about the new certification process that we're looking to roll out in Australia. So certification and testing um, process that will replace our current BIM creds system. In terms of the membership tiers, we've, we're going to try and simplify that. So what we're proposing to do is change it up a little bit where we'll have a general member tier, which would be free, so no cost, where you can join up, you'll get access to information, you'll get email notifications and newsletters. Individual executive members, which would be a paid membership, gets you access to a few different things. And then you can see there the corporate tiers as they go up and strategic partners that can be sort of customised and tailored with particular particularly with a lot of our government clients to, to work closely with us and that will still be available. But some of the things that have changed in this is there was some feedback saying, for example, where we have events on, we used to provide free tickets to events. So we might say three free tickets or four free tickets to an event. Um, some of the feedback that came back said, well, that's difficult because who do you choose within the company? There's always a fight about who gets to take the free tickets. So what we said we'd do now is just to provide a standard discounting depending on your tier um two events and that to make, just, just makes it easier it makes it more it makes it easier for us to administer that as well uh if you're an individual executive member it'll be free ticketing to a lot of our events excluding the fis that's that's at the end of the year which we'll talk about later as well and depending on your tier you'll just get priorities as to what um advantage you get one thing we've added in there as well is discounts to this new certification system and discounts to the new testing system which Holger will talk about. So that'll be part of the benefits of um, membership as well. Uh, one thing that I do want to encourage, and I know a lot of the a lot of the chapters overseas have this, and this is really up to our members to sort of step up and run. If there's an interest in a certain topic, is to develop a, a room or an interest group in Australia um, where we, you know, like-minded individuals could come together, discuss issues around that topic, whether it's rail or civil or buildings or airport or whatever it might be, uh, we can help facilitate that and then the information that's developed through that group could help develop guidelines but also feed information back to BSI to help with the development of the standard. Um, one thing I think we'll do, and we'll talk about this with the IFC 4.3 development, we're doing a lot of use case studies at the moment in actually working closely in the civil space to see how IFC 4.3 actually works in reality. And we might end up turning that into a bit of a room around civil infrastructure and road infrastructure particularly, because I think that's been quite a good opportunity to bring people together outside of tenders and projects and test things and say, well, this is what we actually need from IFC or from the schema, which we can then feed back to BSI. Um, but this really takes you know, members to step up and say, look, I want to run a room. We'll help facilitate that and help coordinate that and bring like-minded like people together. So now I'll hand over to John and Jim to give you a bit of, a, bit of an update on IFC and the IFC development that's happening by BSI. Just let me know, guys, when you want me to flip the slides over. Okay, flip the slide. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm coughing. Um, so this is Jim Plume here, and I've been heavily involved in the um, IFC extent, infrastructure extension work over the last couple of years, last several years, actually. Um, and some of, many of you will have seen these slides before, but I'm introducing them to a wider audience here. So over um, since 2013, we've been developing the infrastructure extensions that began in 2017 with the IFC alignment, the first green box down the bottom there. And then we had a project in 2017 also on uh, which, where we uh, worked on the overall architecture of a, an extension to IFC for infrastructure. And then very significantly after that, we established a series of parallel um, vertical projects around each of the domains, bridge, rail, road, ports and waterways and tunnel. And across there, of course, is the common scheme of work, which uh, attempted to, or didn't attempt to, delivered on some aspects of the schema that were common across those individual domains. And that 
work cumulatively led to the release of IFC 4.3 uh, in the beginning of uh, uh, 2021. And um, we're currently in the process of um, uh, deploying that and testing it. And then that's in the wider context of ongoing work, which uh, would incorporate Tunnel because it's still a project that's running at the moment, hasn't completed its work yet. And all of that's within the context of the IFC Next Generation project, which we can talk about um, as we go along. Next slide. So this slide says much the same kind of thing, but shows it as a timeline. So you can see that in 2018, uh, we're running these parallel projects, common schema, rail, road, ports and waterways. Bridge at that stage had already commenced in early gen in 2017 and uh, actually finished at the beginning of 2019. Um, but those five, sorry, yeah, five streams of work led to the release of a, a um, candidate standard at the beginning of 2020, and that led into a second uh, piece of work which was we called the deployment project which is concerned with uh, developing test cases validating the schema and implementing it through software and uh, also harmonizing the the properties I don't have time here to go into detail on all of that but this is just to give you a, a general picture of where we're heading and uh, that work is now um, coming to a conclusion where uh, our aim, and we believe we'll deliver on this aim, will be to finalise the, the standard at the be, at the end of June this year, so two months away now, and uh, it'll then go for vote uh, within Building Smart and uh, hopefully be approved as a final standard, although I think we're now calling them production standards. Um, the next step after that, which doesn't show on this diagram, is uh, uh, to move toward ISO um, adoption of the of the standard and we hope to do that in the you know the fastest track we can possibly follow um there are now all of that means there's still more work to be done so there's other things to be completed uh, the ifc tunnel project is going we did have plans to develop an ifc landscape project but that so far has languished uh, due to lack of um, stakeholder support but you can see that there has been a lot of work done and it's all culminating in the next couple of months with this final standard IOC 4.3 for infrastructure. Next slide. And this is my last slide on this topic, just to um, emphasize the way in which we are currently validating the schema. Uh, we're doing it from two points of view. The, on the left is the storylines, which is all about real life data exchange. And the um, goal there is to validate the schema that is check that it does the right things that it is relevant to the industry and uh, serves the industry's needs and so we're calling that we'll refer to that as validation but on the right hand side of the diagram are the unit tests which are small atomic exchanges that are implemented in software and we have a, a large uh, team a large body of support from software vendors around the world who are verifying um, at the unit test level that it, uh, the scheme actually does, does things correctly or do things right just to follow the same language and so you have these two sides to the coin validation on the one hand and verification on the other and our goal in this current project is to do both at the moment that work is going is progressing very well it's very dependent on stakeholders who are developing and domain experts developing the storylines but also critically important that we get the support from uh, software vendors and we're getting very strong support um, i want to mention 12d lee is on the call here he's been one of our our strong software support um, vendors and uh, is doing great work in uh, developing unit tests and working with both the infrastructure work and the rail work and uh, that's a really good um, presence in Australia. We also um, have work being uh, led, or I'm not sure who's leading, I guess Eric is leading it from my perspective, but uh, um, looking at uh, use cases around the transport for New South Wales use cases and working closely with the um, this storyline on the one hand and also with 12D and other software tools to uh, do the unit testing. 
So there has been strong engagement from Australia in this final process. So that's really a quick summary of where we're up to with the infrastructure extensions. Bottom line, we're about to deliver them. At the end of June, there will be a final um, production standard for IFC 4.3. Next slide. Yeah, thanks, Jim. And and I've, I think there's been some really good results that have come out of that with some of the testing we've been doing. And Scott Beasley sort of been leading that here with the TFNSW stuff, with, particularly with looking at geotechnical data, survey set out, machine control, and how IFC, you know, moves data around to allow that to happen. So I think that's been really good. Um, hand over to Don to talk about just some general BSI updates, Building Smart International updates. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Eric. Um, would you begin next slide, please? So, yeah, um, you, some of you guys might have noticed a, an email from Building Smart International, um, an interesting project that they're seeking submissions or comments on. Uh, this is an open CDE. So, as you probably all aware, you know, Building Smart Focus has been, you know, over the years, really file based um, focus on open formats and file based. So, now uh, I guess this is a project that's being headed by um, Vim van der Poel. Uh, entitled, as you can see there, a Open CDE Documents API. Um, I guess the, the op opportunity is that this is development now and looking at the application programming interface approach to the inter, you know interoperability challenges. So really encourage all of you guys because a lot of us in the call have got a lot of experience in the the challenges and opportunities presented by you know API approach to to this information exchanges. So please ensure your um, you provide comment to to this group. Um, we'll send a link to everyone after the call if you haven't already received an email from the Building Smart International. And if you aren't on the um, list, I would uh, obviously seriously suggest you get on the email um, subscription list. Next slide, please. Um, international awards, I mean, I think following on the success that the Australasian region had in the 2020 awards, we had Auckland Airports winning the asset management category. We had Cardinal Victoria in the construction category. We had Lend Lease being successful in the professional research category in 2020. As you can see here, yeah, there's I think 19 days today um, for submissions in the 2021 awards. Really encourage all our members to to submit. Um, a lot of the work that you're doing, I think you may not realise how um, how good it is. And I think the submission process, even if you um, don't win an award this year, the pr good practice in getting the submission um, in. It's very straightforward, significantly improved from previous years. If you've got all the information that you would have for your project, and you've you know perhaps made presentations on on the projects before. Please submit. Um, we we're, we're, are available to support you in your submission. There's a, an excellent submission guide, as you can see at the hyperlinks or at the links provided on the BSR page. We will make sure we circulate some more um, email uh, newsletters with these links in it. If not, please give any of us a call and we can point you in the right direction. Um, I think that was it for me. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, just touching on that. These are the the various award sections, um, which is slightly refined from the seven categories of, of 2020 awards. Um, plenty of opportunity for everyone. So even if you don't, you know, submit a project that's specific, you know, about a whole project, you can submit on a specific aspect of that project, um, with the focus obviously on using RFC format or BCF format or those um, building smart supported standards. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so the jury, um, we have I'm currently chairing the jury for this year. We have five members and we're looking for another five members to, to assist in the judging of the awards. Really, I think is a great opportunity. Is obviously a bit of effort involved in, in processing these awards. The, again, the system's been significantly improved from previous years. Um, it's prepped really well. It makes it very easy for you to participate and judge the awards. So we're looking for another five people, like I mentioned, with 10 members on the on the jury. It'd be a lot easier to manage what we're expecting to see a significant volume of, of entries this year. So please put your hand up if you're interested. And I really encourage people to do it because the knowledge that you'll gain by, by seeing what's going on in the rest of the world by being involved in this level of detailed understanding of projects 
and their submissions is obviously pretty significant. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yep, yeah, so as I mentioned, um, myself, Nathan, Russell, John and Gabor are currently on the jury and looking for another five spots as per just drop us an email or give us any of us a call and we'd welcome your board. I think that's it from me. Ah, oh, sorry, yep, yeah, a couple more links here on IFC5, which obviously Jim and John are, are close to. Case management, another link for the portal there. Um, calls for participation, a lot of information on the on the BSI website to get involved in these other initiatives. Data dictionary being updated, if you want to look at that link. And the, the API that I mentioned previously, documents API. I think that's it now, finally. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Don. And it would be good to get some more Australian entries entering the awards. So I know there's a few who've come to us and said they're going to enter. So it would be good to get some Australian New Zealand entries. Absolutely. Up. Okay. Um, yep. Holger, over to you on certification and assessments. Yes. Thank you. So, perfect. So as you know, we have um, started, or in 2017, we started to roll out the Building Smart Australia Asia BIM credit certification program. Um, this program is addressing different stakeholder groups. So it was divided into client, design and construction group. And that was um, divided into a hierarchy being strategic, managerial and technical uh, certification. And these certification programs had different areas that we were looking for to look for the knowledge that is required to do or to be active in those uh, roles. And that was basically um, covering the knowledge and skills framework as well as project management body of knowledge. Next slide, please. So in 2017, the design was rolled out. Um, since then, we had a high number of people, of professionals, doing those certification. In total, we had about 76% uh, of uh, all test takers that have passed this test. Um, looking a bit more by category, um, we have a high passing rate in the strategic area uh, with an average score of 85%. Um, a bit more challenging was the managerial one. We get 58% of all test takers who have passed this test with an average score of 84%. And the technical was 81% of all test takers passing it, also an average score about 85%. So overall, we are quite pleased with the numbers. And um, of course, also using this tool, we can also, as an organization, help companies to create and run specific tests. So we are open for discussions here and also um, share results inside at an agreed level, of course, um, because every data that is being in there, of course, is from private data, so that it would also be, be only be a, able if in collaboration with a company on doing particular things. Next slide, please. So that is all online since 2017. We are now at a point where we are working on, um, in collaboration with Building Smart International, to merge the BIMCRED system with the new professional certification program from Building Smart International. So this is going to happen over the next year. And the, the vision is to provide a global benchmark for open BIM training and also to um, ensure the competency insurance. So as you can see here on the graphic, we basically have a, a foundation level um, to covering the, the general knowledge that needs to be there. And then we have a bit more in regards to practitioners um, going into the areas like create, evaluate, analyze, and apply this knowledge into different fields. Next slide, please. So why are we doing it or what is the goal? For, um, for individuals, of course, um, we want to provide a standardized course content that can be used by uh, training providers, um, teaching and training the latest best practices and lessons learned. Um, also making sure we're providing a certification system that is not just recognized in Australia, Asia, but also on a global scale. And that will basically be the case once we merge BIM credits with the International Professional Certification Program. We also want to make sure it's simple and secure to go online and do those tests after a training course has been accomplished. And for the industry, uh, for companies itself, of course, it's a great opportunity for companies and organizations to provide a tool to upskill their staff or providing opportunity for upskilling. 
Um, again, also keeping international requirements and recommendations in mind, particularly for those companies that are working on an international level. Also um, providing access to standardized training material in, in any participating country and have a clear demonstration of a company's BIM competency so that when companies go for this, they have actually something that can be used to prove that the level of knowledge, the experience is there and ticking those boxes that need to be ticked, especially when it comes to expression of interest for projects. And for training providers, for those who providing training and support to individuals and organizations, of course, um, we want to work with them together so they can um, upgrade their content by using the Building Smart International Learning Outcome Framework, so using this material. Um, also accessing a predefined learning guidelines and support from our local chapters. So making sure that even so it's an international program, we can also um, make sure that regional requirements, regional knowledge or regional terminologies are being integrated uh, for those regions and also being used by the training providers in those regions. And finally, enhancing the reputation through building smart approved courses. Next slide, please. So this is just um, a diagram to show you a bit how such a course could look like. So we basically have um, uh, different uh, categories again, as we had with BIM credits, um, but we will have more. So it will not be just for clients, designers and contractors, but we will also be looking at owners, facility manager and others later down uh, the road. Um, but in general, it, has, it will cover like five learning outcomes or modules, and these will be split into learning outcomes. And these again will be split into different um, sections where tasks need to be um, worked through or learned, and then also individual questions that are addressing these different uh, modules and tasks. Next one, please. Um, Holger, just before we move on from this section. Um... Bonnie had to go, but Russell had just asked with the current BSI PCERT programs, the accessibility level from Australia. So might be a good opportunity to just talk about kind of the crossover and what setting up the training facilities and things yeah. will look like. So we, of course, we will have a, a rollout time where things will have to be established, particularly with those who are providing training. So what will happen is the BIM credits is still available. You can still go for it. Um, once the, the PISA program has been accomplished or completed for Australia, um, it will replace the BIM credits system. There will be a period of approximately a year where you can just do the test without attending a course. After the year, and we will use that time to establish certified training trainers and training facilities, then after that year, it will be linked to a course that needs to be um, yeah, to be signed off so that after the course, then you can do the test and get your certificate. Okay, thanks, Holger. Hand over to Mark now, just talk about Building Smart in NZ. Thanks, Eric. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mark Fairburn, and I'm based uh, here in Auckland. And as you can imagine, in the current environment, collaboration between Australia and New Zealand has been somewhat difficult over the last year or so. So um, I'll go through what we've been doing. Uh, just on that, actually, I should have included a slide. Um, we did some work with um, some webinars to try and keep ourselves relevant in that period. And um, we did those late last year, and they're up available on the uh, on the website under the podcast um, around digital supply chain. Um, and I, I think I feature in that one. So um, go and have a look at that. It's um, some interesting stuff. And also Bonnie, who's just dropped off, unfortunately, from GS1, uh, talking about that as well in the, in, in the manufacturer side. So next slide, please, Eric. Um, just so you're aware um, of this in New Zealand, I um, obviously work for Master Spec, um, and we've been making uh, this site available as an alpha. Um, uh, model, but uh, effectively it's it's showing it's a, a metadata tool, uh, trying to encourage people to use more of the parameter standards and and compare them. Obviously, this has got um, five odd different um, schemas in here, uh, including CBI, which Master Spec uses, but IFC obviously, and the Open Object BIM standard, which we did with um, NatSpec in Australia. Um, and the idea is that you can look at those property sets and information inside these models, um, and even export them. Um, either as a Revit, I think at the moment, or uh, um, uh, as a um, uh, just a, an Excel spreadsheet at the moment. But we're also looking at increasing this, but it's all voluntary and, and, and as as we move it forward. So um, just next slide, please, Eric. Thanks. 
Um, just on that, I work on the uh, NZTSC, the New Zealand Technical Standards Committee, um, and we built that last um, website basically as a response to that. It's all voluntary and it's pretty resource poor, um, so I'd encourage anybody uh, in New Zealand to actually help us out with that. Um, but the idea is that we're trying to establish BIM standards in New Zealand and, and, and master spec, if you like, was charged with providing the vertical side of it um, for building. But we've also tried to include things like three waters and, and also um, some uh, infrastructure as well. So out of that, um, just uh, an FYI for anybody in New Zealand, there's a, a new committee looking to start or launch, which is um, uh, CODENS. Um, and the idea is to try and get a national strategy together that get, gets us on the road faster. Um, and also to try and initiate um, a new group to develop and coordinate that national strategy and hopefully some funding along those lines. So I just thought that was worth probably mentioning as well. Uh, next slide, please, Eric. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate this. Obviously, I'm from New Zealand. I want to Skype. So um, we did win last year. So I encourage you all to enter. It's not impossible. So against um, all those other international awards, um, Auckland Airport uh, won, which was fantastic. Um, have a look on the site too. It's really interesting to go and have a look at um, some really nice key learnings there. So um, next slide. I'd say it's another reason for more Australian entries, isn't it, Mark? Correct. Yeah, well, we won first. So, we're <laughs> Uh, so that, yeah, that'll cover it off actually. Um, the slide that I had in the deck was um, just um, go and have a look online. Obviously um, you can enter there uh, and uh, it was covered off earlier, um, but yeah, there's only 20 odd days, so get in. Thanks, Mark. Audrey, FIS. Yes, very exciting guys. FIS is coming back this year. We were pretty well this time last year in the crux of planning it all as everything crumbled around us. So um, we pretty much just had to keep postponing and postponing until we ultimately canceled. So this year, um, we've actually just started our planning committee um, meetings back up after deciding that it was going to be pretty safe to plan a, an event as a not-for-profit of this caliber. So everything is being worked out as we speak, but um, we have definitively decided that the save the date will be for the, either the last week in October. Next slide, please or um, the first week of November. And basically that's because we want to offer uh, a main kind of plenary presentation style session on the first day. Um, we're gonna be opening that to about 150 people in person and then doing a hybrid um, virtual event as well. So it'll be a bit more intimate, a bit more um, kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Exclusive, if you will, um, than last year for in-person attendance. Um, the previous years, we started off in Brizzy with about 350 attendees, and then the 2019 series were both in Melbourne and Brisbane, each with about that am amount of attendees. So, yeah, we're hoping to just um, rein it in, get some really interesting international speakers, not necessarily even just from the BIM arena, but just kind of leaders in digitization, technology, people who are really nailing what they're doing that we can take and then apply to our industry. So we're really excited about it, just um, in the midst of kind of sorting out the, the speaker lineup and venue. But yeah, keep those dates penciled in your calendars and stay tuned for more. And we should mention we're doing it in collaboration with Lean, uh, as we did the other two. So it's with the um, Lean Construction ANZ. So it's a collaboration between Building Smart and them. So we'll have a mix of speakers on the first day. And on the second day, we're looking to do more sort of closed door roundtable sessions where we bring people together from different areas, whether it's government or consulting or construction, um, for specific topics to be discussed. So it should be good. Uh, notice board, Audrey, or I could probably talk about this. It's a, yeah, so as always, if you're not aware of it, um, we have a notice board up, board up on our website. We're in the process of revamping our website, so that'll that'll be revamped soon. But um, at the moment, there, we still get the notice board up there. Any events that you may be aware of or you want to get posted up there, just send them to Audrey and we'll get them up onto our calendar and our community notice board. Anything you want to add to that, Audrey? Um, no, I just, yeah, if you guys have a change of date for anything or um, even if it's something that you don't necessarily think is like a big BIM style convention or something, um, you know, if you've have if you've got trainings on or, you know, we're always collaborating with the, the BIM groups in the local cities, you know, like the 
Build SA, BIM SA, um, BRISBIM, BIM Beers guys, uh, just send it through. We're happy to kind of promote whatever it is that you have on. And in our mail outs, we can include it as well. I feel like sometimes people don't take full advantage of that. And then they say retroactively, oh, I wish, you know, we could have used your mail out group for that or um, would have been great to get you guys involved. So please employ us for those things. We're dindering, so the Digital Infrastructure Network, um, we just gave this whole look uh, revamp last year. Um, Russell Bond's actually quite involved with this, and they're pretty much the ones um, who we put on most of our networking stuff, quote, through. Um, but we control the Digital Infrastructure Network, and yeah, typically that's just involved with any event that we put on in person, um, the networking that follows. So if you guys want to hop on LinkedIn, um, you should be able to find us there. I think that's it. That sort of wraps it up and we'll open it up to Q&A, but that's, uh, I think we've sort of kept the time. Yeah. But yeah, open it up to you guys to any questions. Feel free to put your hand up, type them in. Or if you're too shy, just send them through. Uh, Neil. Oh, hi, Eric. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, that uh, Building Smart International were doing a lot of use case studies at the moment. Uh, which room is that taking place in? And do you know if they're coordinating their activities with the ISO Working Group 8 that's looking at um, the information delivery manual um, ISO 29481 Part 3? I'll defer to Jim or John. Okay. Um, the answer to the first question is it's, it's across all the rooms, Neil, oh, so it okay. covers um, the whole gambit and it's it's fairly new. It was trialled about oh, maybe a year ago, but it's now been uh, refined and improved, and it's now formally launched. Um, we haven't, because it was um, only just being launched, it hasn't really been tied into the IDM Part 3 work with ISO as yet, but um, um, there's certainly uh, an opportunity there because that, that standard will define use cases in a, in a um, you know, a machine readable form, and uh, we'll be able to link to that website. But that's a, a work in progress. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. And Eric. Thanks for the question. Thanks, Neil. Any other questions? David, how polite. You're raising your hand. Yeah, um, not so much a question. Just wondering, looking at um, the in the notes there where Bonnie um, uh, put that comment about the work that GS1 and BSI are doing. I just wondered whether maybe for our next one, if we involve GS1 in keeping everyone informed as to what's going on there, because it, it also crosses over with BIM Map Oz and, uh, and another group here in Oz as well, where they've been implementing some of the GS1 standards. Yeah, good point. And then anything else that anybody thinks that they'd want to hear more of in our next update, just let us know. Hi, Eric. Can you hear me? Yes. John Mitchell. Um, just on the use case management, um, we've had a long pause while the model setup georeferencing uh, sort of came to a final conclusion. But uh, Lee Gregory and I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, sent some small updates that now Thomas Cliati, who's heading the use case management uh, group, will publish it. So uh, there is. Uh, it must be very very soon um, but that bit of work has come to a conclusion and it'll become available on his website that's great thanks john we'll have to link that through through our website anyone else i think we're just about at time anyway but um Appreciate everyone for attending and like I said, if there's anything else you want to hear more of or at our next update, we'll work out how often we're going to do them. I think we said three a year at the moment, but if there's more demand, we might do more um, or less. So just let us know. Uh, appreciate everyone joining us today and um, have a good rest of your day or you know the day you've had already. So thanks a lot, everybody. Yeah, awesome work, guys. 
Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks board members. Uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And cool. honestly, guys, um, this was pretty much the result of us just wanting to really provide, um, you know, better value and more clear communication with our membership base. That was a big takeaway from these kind of corporate membership catch-ups that we've been having. So if you guys want anything specific, I know this was touched on just quickly before, but if you want anything specific covered or there's something that you feel like you want access to that we're just not really being transparent about, please just send me an email. Um, most of you guys have my email, but just audrey at buildingsmart.org.au um, and just get it on the agenda for the next catch up because we're here for you guys and that's kind of the whole point of all this. So just want to make sure that everyone's talking about stuff that you care about. Well said, Audrey. Right, yeah. thank, thank you very Thanks, much. Everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See ya.